whole other line. Um, uh, so we can't really touch it. It's right. like sci-fi. We, we, we have ideas for sci-fi. We have a pulp thing. There's some other stuff. That There's we, the cyberpunk thing. Yeah. But all of those are like full launches. So uh, what we're going to do is focus on Fantasy Craft and focus on Spycraft Third and focus on 10,000 Bullets. And LGW is and coming Ms. next year. And Miss Porn. Yeah. yeah. So already our plate's pretty full. And uh, once we're past the launches on those, and we've got some people who can actually prop them up in our wake, um, we'll, uh, we'll be looking at doing bigger, bigger and badder products. So there will be other, there will be other stuff, but when, uh, what we, when we get to it, we want to make sure that, that, that they're done just with just as much love as all the other games. So, so you start. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. We will do a sci-fi setting eventually. That is actually the biggest hole. Um, right. We know what we're doing with with uh, with pulp. We know what we're doing with uh, uh, with horror and cyberpunk. We have not as much of an idea about sci sci-fi yet. Right. Yeah. 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 But I'm sure we'll get it at some point. At s someday there will be some late night drunken conversation. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I I'm thinking about pitching Muppets in space as our Muppets in space. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As, as long as we can actually have the, the logo be like the Shadow Force Hunter Pigs logo in with space. Yeah, yes, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> yes. I know this is a little early, but um, any thoughts on additional books for this one? Uh, yes. Not early, actually. Yes. We're releasing in November. We have uh, Alloy of Law coming as a full book and a whole PDF line, which I'll let him talk about. Yes. Okay. So, so the, uh, the, the, the next printed supplement that will come from Mistborn will be Alloy of Law. So you have one covering all, all the series uh, up to that point until the next one comes, um, and then uh, the the we're doing a PDF series, uh, which will be kind of I, right now tentatively it's called Secrets of, whatever, and uh, we're playing with the idea of blowing out parts of the dark corners of the Mistborn world. So uh, one of those the first one that we've slated that I, I've got a pretty good handle on is Condra. So talking not about the Condra like, oh, yeah, they live in this hole in the ground. And they used to be these guys. You know, it's, uh, and they're blue and they invaded It's New much York. more about Condra hierarchy, society, um, you know, all the things that we didn't ever fill in. Because we could take this and float it to Brandon and he can be like, sure. <laughs> you know, And that's how it goes kind of with the approvals. Um, and so we'll be doing that with other things. There's also um, uh, Mistborn is being written towards... The, the original trilogy. Um, it's also being written towards being crews. You're kind of people who exist outside society. But we, I, I want to do, um, I have titles for these too, which I both, are both pretty awesome. Um, one is about playing for the nobility. Okay. So yeah, so you, the second. Yeah, exactly. So playing, playing a noble crew, like what happens when you're fighting for, the, for a house, doing things for a house. And so it's more about like house espionage and those intrigues and really kind of exploring that. Like what are the 10 great houses? What are some lesser houses that the players might attach themselves to and come up in? Uh, and then the one that I think is really, it's the dark side campaign book for this. It's, it's for playing steel ministry. So yes, it's, it's uh, yeah. Faith in steel is the one there. And so that is, that is actually coming in and yes, potentially playing an inquisitor. Uh, and, uh, but we have to, we have to finish Alloy of Law first because Alloy of Law has use of powers that our friends, the Inquisitors, get to do. So um, it's kind of reliant on having all those things established so they're consistent across the line. But yeah, there will be, a, and, and actually I was looking at, that's kind of the Mistborn Cops game is playing Steel Ministry and getting into other cantons, because there are more cantons than the one they describe. Um, You'll so, see new cities, new maps, new locations. Right. We're doing a Borderlands book, a yeah, Borderlands the, product. Burn, the Burnlands. Burnlands yeah. product. The Burnlands, because there's a lot of story out there, and that's kind of the, um, I, I look at that as kind of proto um, alloy of law in some ways, because that's it's very much like the Western uh, you know, area. And you know, Brandon's given us a lot of work, uh, material to work with. He's like, oh, I think this, this part of the world is kind of like this part of our world. So there's touch points. And, uh, and we're fleshing that out. You'll see that, some of that in the core book. It's not just going to be a rehash of like, oh, by the way, <laughs> everything happens in Luthadel. And there's one city outside of Luthadel, <laughs> too. You know, it, it's much more about um, focusing on what the action is of those stories and then giving you a little bit to start and then getting into that in those PDFs because otherwise we're going to write a 600-page book. It would take us another year, and I don't really want to do that. I don't think you want to wait another year. I don't want to have this conversation again. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> So yeah, the um, so we will be developing as we go, and eventually, as that gets closer to being uh, complete, we will collect them into a print edition, 
um, because we are we want to be able to do things like sell into the book trade. So um, you know the, the 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 core game audience is still very important, but also we would love to see our book sitting next to other Mistborn books on the shelf in your local bookstore, uh, where people can look at that as a supplement, and this is this is telling you more about what this world is. So that's that's where we're going. So Mistborn is a full line. Yes, yes, and we have ideas for other eras and stuff like that, but that's down much the further road. down the line. Yes, road. we always have plans. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Looking glass ones. Yeah, um, probably next fall. Probably by fall, I mean 2012. Probably in terms of when it comes out. Um, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, well, the benefit with the the literary licenses is that we have outside teams taking care of chunks of them. Um, it was specifically built this way. We we brought on people who are really good with story gaming. Um, to, uh, to specifically write the portions of the game that Alex and I don't have to take care of ourselves. We, we focus on the system. Um, LGW will use a different system um, than uh, Mistborn. Mistborn is a die game. It's, it's very uh, traditional um, and yet highly narrative. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's traditional that you roll dice, you have a character sheet. Yeah. You know, it's got numbers on it. Uh, it's it's, it's the... untraditional in that it has sort of flexible time increments. Um, and uh, and it's more indie in the way that characters yeah. are built and the way that campaigns come together. Yeah. People who have played the games like Fate will be a little more familiar with it. They'll see parts of it. There's a lot of things. We we looked at a lot of indie games and a lot of old games, actually. Yeah. Star Wars D6 was actually a, a, big, a big influence early yeah. on. So uh, very early Shadowrun was another one that we looked at. So the interesting thing with Mistborn uh, or in LGW, the relationship, is that, that as we dug into, as I dug into LGW, because uh, Mistborn is his baby, LGW is always mine. Um, we uh, were, were comparing notes and we realized that they, they weren't really as similar as we thought they were initially, and, and so they didn't, they deserve different systems. And so they have this very similar superstructures in, in terms of how the games are played, but when it gets down to, to task resolution, um, they, they needed very different things. Um, and LGW is very, very primordial at the moment, but it's probably going to be a card-based mechanic where you're actually playing with a 52-card a, a playing deck, uh, which, of course, makes a lot of sense for, for the, the setting. Yeah. So. Um, and it will be treated the same way as Mistborn. It will have um, a, a PDF line and supplements from there. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, that would be one of the classified projects. Right, um, yes. We, uh, they, they are not abandoned. Yeah, Dramatic Conflicts will return next year with Modern. Um, when we do them with Modern, you will see something that keys back into fantasy. So we're not abandoning fantasy Dramatic Conflicts. Um, and what we're doing is really interesting. I think at the end, you're going to find that um, it's, it's kind of what you've wanted all along. Uh, the, it, it specifically says everybody at the table is involved all the time um, and no character can uh, master them so completely that playing them is irrelevant. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> like I said, classified. <laughs> Anything else? No? All right. Um, so, Alex, so uh, when we do SFA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll or, see or something there. At this point, SA. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, uh, specifically for, say, like I still don't know. We, we, go, we waffle on that too. You know, what, we're, what the market is telling us is that um, standalone mechanical supplements are a bad idea. Um, the market wants settings. They want framework, right? You, you don't want just psionics. You want to know, well, how are they being used in the game and what's the context? Um, and you can't really do that for fantasy without creating a setting for it. And I don't really know that that would be worthwhile. Um, what would be worthwhile is, uh, is, is uh, releasing them with Series Archer and finding a way to backport them into fantasy craft at that point. Mm. So. Any other questions before we dive in? Okay, so I have some general questions. Um, uh, in 
Every, how many people here play fan, uh, play either play Fantasy Craft or played uh, one of our D20 style games in the past? Most? Okay. okay, good. These questions will be for you. So what is your average level range? Like, do, do you guys play, do you start at a certain level? Do you end at a certain level? Do you favor certain levels? You can just shout it out. Generally, lower levels seem to be more playable. Uh, characters start getting, I mean, about six, seven. They, they start getting a little overwhelming. Please, can you elaborate on overwhelming? Hard, um, hard to uh, run at because there'd be some that aren't as overwhelming as others, and it's hard for me to mesh those and not like totally wipe out half the party and the other half being able to. You know, the range becomes out. wider, is what you're saying. Challenge. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, do other people find this to be true? Are you playing at low levels mostly? Are you? Feel free to just dive in. Okay, you one, and then you get to six. Six, six, is, six is about the cap out. Six or so, yeah. yeah, okay. okay. I started one, and both my last Minecraft game and my current Fantasy Craft game, it's looking like 13 or 14 is where So you, you barely scratch Game Breakers, right? Uh, no. Well, what I'm playing on right now, yes, is their final game. Their final session and their duty session is they should make 14 to their Game Breakers. And Okay. Does okay, anybody yeah. here play level 15 and above? We just started, so. Okay, okay. And so you're playing level, you started level yeah, one, though. Yeah, we started mm -hmm. level one, but I mean, literally, Tuesday was our first uh, Okay, well, you should be level four by now. I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of GM do you have? Why are you here? Why aren't you at home leveling yeah, your character? Yeah, first couple levels do go quick. Now, now, and, and what do you think of the pace? Like, I mean, did you like that, that level one advancement was fairly quick? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so people yeah, felt like... something more to, to get into. Let's see if they keep the, the character quicker. Because you get more abilities, more power, more whatever. Well, in general, on that question, so at level one, how many people have played a level one character in one of our games? Good, right. okay. Does anybody here uh, uh, feel, is there anybody here unhappy with the, the amount of abilities you're getting? Is it too little? Is it too much? It's good. I think it's good. It's good, so okay. What was that you said? At what level do you feel that happens? It starts to have around six or seven. Okay. Uh, typically, like when we hit 10 or 11 weeks ago, uh, <laughs> well, it was like the end of the game. What, what happened? I, I, I'm, I'm seeing your companion here laughing, so. <laughs> Be careful with your hands on the table. Basically, it just casts a spell, warps it, everybody dies. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's either. Okay. okay. Is, it, uh, is that the difference between standard and special in your game, or do you find that there's a middle ground? Okay. 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 Right. Well, yeah, you get crit with 7d6 or 10d6 damage. It's like, how many wounds do you have? 12. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Right. Do you find that happens? Is, is that happening with a type of character, like a spellcaster versus a non-spellcaster, or I don't know what your experience is, but. Um, 